So if you want my opinion on I don't think if you are a girl who has not developed her emotional self, who struggles with her emotional self, who struggles with raging hormones and emotions, I think the worst thing that you can do as a girl in this position is to have Huh? Hello, hello. I know I've been gone for quite some time. I feel like I should just kind of just get back to it and not dwell too much on the fact that I haven't been here. But, you know, just for a brief synopsis on things, I've just been focusing on my mental health. More so of me focusing on mental health, I've more so been focusing on my emotional intelligence. Just my emotional self, I guess I could say. I feel like emotional intelligence makes me feel a little bit weird, that word, but I feel like my emotional self sounds a little bit better. So today, I really would like to talk about SEX. This is just a topic I've been really wanting to talk about because I, I do have majority girl su subscribers on my channel and a lot of you are younger and I just wish that this is a conversation that somebody had with me and I'm gonna have this conversation with you to the best of my ability so that maybe it can save you some pain and suffering in the future. So sex, wow, okay, how do I even start this conversation? I'm so confused. Okay, I don't know what your relationship is with sex, but unfortunately for me, my relationship with sex was very confusing because you know, I had this grand dream when I was a kid that I would find the love of my life and we would get married and that's how I would lose my virginity. You know, unfortunately, I was put in a position where I didn't get that choice and because of that, I had this very weird relationship with my body, with my emotional self, and with sex because again I didn't get that choice and so this one problem catapulted me into so many other areas of my life negatively that I didn't even realize because you know I didn't have anyone to really tell me and I was living in group homes and foster homes when I was a teenager so I didn't really have that real support system at the time like a support system that could have actually like a mom or dad that could have really been there for me and talked me through everything so when I was 14 I got my virginity taken away from me and after that I was put on birth control right away they put me on birth I went to a sexual health clinic because I was really scared I sort of told them what happened and they didn't offer me therapy they didn't offer me nothing they only said they the only thing they did was they gave me a prescription for birth control which the, I, I remember being such an active kid even when thir 12 13 I was always so active and go 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 in the middle that I went on birth control it like my whole personality changed I didn't realize it but looking back at it my personality changed my metabolism changed I was always tired I had brain fog and I was so much hungrier than I ever been I developed unhealthy eating habits I developed body dysmorphia I developed just so much hate for myself it's a so it's a snowball effect right one thing one thing happens and if it doesn't get solved it just keeps on getting bigger and bigger and worse and worse and that's what happened when I had my virginity taken away from me I almost lost myself I didn't know who I was anymore I really felt like I betrayed myself I really felt like I betrayed Veronica the things I stand for my belief system that night everything went in the trash who I was who I knew no longer existed and then I go to a, a clinic to talk to them about what happened nobody helped me they just put me on birth control and then that was that was a really shitty band-aid on top of a really horrible incident so let's fast forward between the ages of 16 and 20 I had a really weird relationship with sex I wasn't really having it but I felt like it didn't matter anymore and that hurts me to think about that because it does matter okay I need a moment <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> we're just getting to Jollibee. We're almost there. I feel like birth control is another video I could make too, just on its own. But birth control is like the worst thing ever. I wouldn't recommend anyone to use birth control personally. If you're somebody who has always had a, a very high emotional intelligence, and if you're somebody who has never had some type of trauma happen to their body that has made them feel weird with themselves and weird with sex, this video doesn't really apply to you. People who aren't low on the emotional self-awareness spectrum, this video really isn't for you because you can probably have sex here and there and it won't really affect you the way that it might affect someone else. Mind you, I don't even agree with that to be honest with you because the thing is, is that there's always an energy exchange with sex and you're also risking disease right like okay so we're just getting to Jollibee right now I hope that I'm doing a good job on like keeping track of what I'm talking about because I feel like there's so much I want to say 
I'm trying to collect my thoughts because I've never been really somebody to write things down. I'm, I'm getting to that point. I've become a very efficient and consistent book reader <laughs> like I read a lot but I haven't become a, a consistent writer yet and that's what I'm, I'm that's what I'm looking to do next so I can better organize things I want to talk about and stuff like that so we're just getting to Jollibee right now I'll be right back I have to go inside okay BRB so I have some Jollibee here Ooh. first here Oh, my mashed potatoes. I have some beef steak Ooh. with some mashed potatoes. Ooh, your mashed potatoes are honestly my favorite. Ooh. Beautiful. I'm gonna set this aside for a second. Some jelly bee sauce. I have a six piece bucket of chicken here. Ooh. Okay. We have the six-piece bucket here, and then oh, please tell me it's the pile book. Please tell me it's the pile book. Oh, it's the, it's the jolly spaghetti. We can't go wrong there. It's also really delicious. But where's the pile book? I have two pies. Got some two pies here. So much food. And then oh my god! Please tell me it's the pile book. Please tell me it's the pile book. Literally, this is my favorite thing on the menu, honestly. Oh, what is? Hmm. I should have got extra sauce. I always forget to ask for extra sauce. Yeah. Okay. Mmm. Yum, 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 yum. Mm. So good. Okay, so getting back into what I was saying, let me get some of this drink here. Mm, delicious between 14 and 18 i would say i didn't really i still wasn't really having sex and then i got into a relationship with some guy when i was 19 and he really just treated me like a sexual object we didn't really have a relationship and he just made me feel like like i had to have sex with him it wasn't intimate i didn't feel like i was gonna be with this person for the rest of my life i didn't feel like this person was my person that i was gonna get married he was just someone that was my boyfriend and that's it dating became this really weird thing where i was I, it was just based on i guess who was like the most attracted to me it became at one point there's so many things you got to look out for as a woman and and as a girl and not having a good relationship with yourself and your body is the first stepping stone to disaster. So if you're a girl right now who is curious about sex, maybe has lost their virginity, maybe has not lost their virginity yet, I would honestly push you in the direction if you do feel like you have some emotional instability, working on that first before having sex with anyone because our emotional self, when it's not in check and then we're putting ourselves in dangerous situations like going out clubbing where people can put 
drugs in your drink, going on dates with men we don't know via dating apps. These are all potentially dangerous situations as a girl that we are putting ourselves in if we don't have our emotional self in check because we can be taken advantage of very easily. Like our nose will be a yes to some sick weirdo. You know what I mean? A sick person will not respect your no, especially if you're somebody who is even scared to say no. I wouldn't recommend anyone who hasn't developed their emotional self yet into primarily having sex. If if you can avoid putting yourself in this situation, then I would I would highly recommend it. So, yeah. Uh, okay, let's eat something else because I'm getting like... I feel like I'm saying a lot. I hope it's all making sense. And I'm getting also a little bit hungry. So, let's pick this up. You know, let me get, let me get a sip of this. Ooh, mashed potatoes. Would you like some potatoes? Mm. Mm, my favorite. These little burger steaks are so good. Mmm, I'm juicy. So juicy. Mmm. I love potatoes. Oh my god. The potatoes is honestly my favorite. <sighs> mm. Did I just flip a potato? I sure did. Ooh. Mm. That was great. So, I've dated in the past before where guys were just looking for sex out of me and I hadn't developed my person. I was going up against men who, who know themselves, who have developed themselves as men, and then they meet someone like me who hasn't developed themselves as, as a woman. Let's eat a piece of chicken because I'm, I'm getting hungry again. Or should I eat some spaghetti? <laughs> I'm going to have some chicken. Okay. This is the main goal out of a lot of men. Their main goal is to just have sex with you and you need to really take your time to get to know someone. If you don't have strong emotional intelligence, if you don't have a strong emotional self, your emotional self will always give in before you give in to, to, to these people. <laughs> oh, yeah. I swear there was a different sauce. Was this the only sauce that they had? But yeah, so I've I've taken two years to just learn how to date properly and also just give myself a chance to get to know the men that I am interested in and I am dating because after Ari and I broke up, my emotional self really went out of whack again. It was taking a much better turn when I was with Aria because I, I had that safe place with him. But after we broke up for, you know, great reasons, like him and I both needed to grow apart, unfortunately, that triggered something inside of me that I went a little bit haywire. It triggered 
cleared all of the trauma that I hadn't fully dealt with. I was dealing with, with Ari, but at such much slower pace because I was only really focused on work, to be honest with you. I wasn't really focused too much on myself. I was trying to. Anybody who has emotional problems knows that we want to say and do certain things, but we're always stopped by our emotional self. Our emotional self has such a louder voice than what we know we should do and what we should say. It's like we're locked in a room where there's screens and you can just see our emotional self doing the talking for us and we don't even want to say that or want to react that way we know we don't want to but because we're locked in this room because our emotional self is so much stronger and it's not in in tuned and, and aligned with our with our thought process it takes over this channel and it does all the talking for us when aria and i broke up it's like my system went completely out of whack all the problems that i was sort of sort of suppressing and trying to chip away at slowly and fix slowly just abruptly came out and I found myself in the same situation emotionally that I was before I met Aria. Should I eat my spaghetti right now? <laughs> so when Aria and I broke up, everything came rushing to me of all the kind of problems I was suppressing before. And then I ended up getting in a relationship with someone that was like would just not leave me alone did all the right things but i didn't get to know that this person before i decided they were just going to be my boyfriend they just pushed themselves into my lives and and made a home there even though i knew it was wrong and i wanted and i tried to say no to this person because they were so persistent and my emotional self i had just begin, begun to work on it and then this person entered my life they just took over everything and my life started going downhill that's the reason why i started doing asmr because I didn't want to talk anymore because I was so embarrassed with where my life was that I had let some random person, some random man into my life and he completely hijacked my entire sense of self and it ended up obviously blowing up in my face, right? Like this guy was a complete energy vampire, you know, I was doing really well, was focusing on myself, all of a sudden his life is doing well and I'm starting to become worse and he's physically abusive to me and he's mentally abusive to me and he's hitting me and so the reason why like i went silent on my channel for a bit was because i was because i was just embarrassed that i had let this person into my life and i was completely being taken advantage of eventually i got him out finally he like ripped my necklace and he ripped a purse that aria bought for me and that was quite of, sort of my wake-up call like this person was like physically abusing me, but that was my wake up call, you know? And then I ended up just taking a hiatus from the internet because I was like, I need to just work on myself. Like I need to work on my emotional self and my emotional awareness because this is the main problem that it, this is like the main theme in my life. It's not mental health. It was really just, it is mental health, but it stems from your emotional health first, a hundred percent, your emotional self and your ability or your inability to focus. So these two things can be a huge impact on whether or not you are making decisions that you want to make. Cheers. <laughs> mm. Mm hmm <laughs> You can say no to pasta, not me. I can never say no to pasta. So if you want my opinion on sex, I don't think if you are a girl 
who has not developed her emotional self, who struggles with her emotional self, who struggles with raging hormones and emotions, I think the worst thing that you can do as a girl in this position is to have sex. You're setting yourself up for disaster. And when, when we have sex and, and it's with a guy that we haven't vetted, it's with a guy that we haven't gotten to know, ends up as they were just taking advantage of us. There's nothing worse to our emotional self than feel like somebody just used us. That is the absolute worst thing for a girl who's already struggling with her emotions to go through. You're so much better off not having sex and fixing your emotional self than you are in just thinking that the next guy is going to be different because none of them are different. How you act and how you handle the situation is what's going to make the difference. It's never going to be the guy. I actually am kind of getting full. I'm going to put that aside for a second. Two years single. To almost going on three years and two years is a long time but i mean we all know covid made two three years feel like nothing right for many of us anyways i'm no longer interested in men who are either desperate for me because why do you want me so badly why are you trying so hard to push yourself in my life this is like weird you know that's a red flag for me now whereas before the the last guy that i dated he completely pushed himself into my life and made himself a freaking home when i got to know him i did not like what i what i saw it was probably one of the worst relationships i was in guy was so so gross. Ew, 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 ew. And I noticed after that person that I was with, I had taken on so much of his negative characteristics. And I knew it was because not only I was spending time with this person, but because I, I allowed him to enter into my area. And like, that's so gross. <laughs> like guys, now they scare me because I'm like, that's scary in the sense where I'm afraid of them, but scare me in the sense of like, I need to make sure that I'm getting to know you because I no longer have time in my life for people to screw me up anymore. I now care more about my ability to to get to know someone and my ability to have self-control more than I care about just being with someone. I care more about really taking the time to get to know this person. I want to be with someone who also knows how to make the right decisions. If I'm taking the time to work on myself and make sure that I'm making the right decisions, I want to make sure that I am with someone that knows how to do that too. And this might seem like obvious to some people, but as somebody who has been very confused on sex since they were 14, 13, and some Somebody who has been very confused on my emotional self it has not been that easy for me to figure out and has not been that easy for me to get to this place where I'm okay with being alone there was a time in my life where I couldn't even be alone for the life of me I absolutely needed to have somebody there in my personal life I feel like this is the happiest I've been ever in terms of just my mental health my emotional self my personal life I love that I'm vetting guys I'm not letting guys sway me very easily emotionally I'm not letting them just like convince me that they're gonna be there and then they're not there because they were never gonna be there they were just testing me and this is something that I've learned about men and women is that whether we realize it or not we're always consciously testing the other person we're testing their ability to be true to themselves we're testing either their masculine or their feminine energy we're just testing absolutely everything all the time and we don't even realize it and once I realize that this is how we are and this is what is happening I realize that everything's a test in life Everything's always a test of whether or not you're going to keep your word and whether or not you want to live a certain type of lifestyle and whether or not you're going to be honest with yourself, you know? So these are all tests that are happening all the time. And if your emotional self isn't fully developed, you're going to fail these tests because you're always going to say yes when deep down inside you want to say no. You're never going to have that voice that you need to have if you don't work on your emotional self, especially when it comes to dating. Like there's really nothing worse than not having a voice when you're dating someone. It's like they just walk all over you you and and you only sometimes have control of the situation when you don't need to control that person but you need to be able to control by being in touch with the fact that sometimes you're going to feel certain things and that it's okay to feel those things but knowing how to say no even if you're feeling like saying yes even though your body is coming up with all these emotions and you quickly want to give in you're able to say you know what no I'm not going to give in and I know that I'm just really excited right now and I know that I'm feeling all these emotions of love and lust and dare I say a little bit of desperateness <laughs> but still having that ability to say no and that's emotional intelligence so you don't need to be having sex if you are a virgin you don't need to be having sex okay what everyone is saying everyone experimenting they're experimenting because they haven't realized this yet and one day they most likely will realize that whether they like it or not okay so just don't have sex no 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 sex for you close your legs
keep them shut. <laughs> and if you are going to have sex, make sure you're an emotionally intelligent and that you're making this decision because you actually want to make this decision, not because you have no control over yourself. Okay, girl, I don't want you getting a disease. I don't want you getting pregnant by some guy that doesn't actually love you. And if these things have happened to you where you have been pregnant, you know, maybe you're not with the person anymore. If you did get a disease, you know what? At the end of the day, you just got to you just got to keep working on yourself. And even though these things happen, you can't let it get you down and you know better now so just do better because i don't want the people who have been in this situation thinking that like i'm putting them down because i'm not i've made so many stupid decisions and you know what eventually we learn so just learn that's all and do better for yourself baby girl because because men are counting on us to make decisions based on our emotions because that's where their playing field is that's where they can convince you to be someone that you're not and do something you don't want to do i feel like i've talked a lot and i don't know whether or not my point is getting across for you not to have sex for the love of god don't have sex you know you just you don't have to have sex okay love yourself get to know your emotional self read any of these books i'm gonna leave a link down below if you're going through some heartbreak i'm gonna link down below for some books i read that have helped me date better there's no better time to read a book than during heightened emotion it's so beautiful how our mind just picks up everything and holds on to the word so much better so i have a link down below for working on your emotional intelligence books to help you with that and i also have a link down below to help you with dating and getting to know men and getting to know, know yourself please don't have sex you're so much better than just being a sexual object for these disgusting losers yes i hope i did a good job on explaining to you guys on the importance of i .e., your emotional self because that if that is out of whack it doesn't matter how hard you want to say no you're always going to say yes and that is not a good life to live because you're always going to be a victim of circumstance opposed to living your life through how you actually want to live it right because there's nothing worse than a guy picking you and then you realizing that this guy's a fucking loser like I'm sorry but that happened to me two years ago and I vowed that that's never gonna happen to me ever again where I'm just gonna allow some idiot into my life because I have like no self-control over even though I told this guy so many times I didn't want him there he just like made himself a home and I like convinced myself that I was like it was like Stockholm syndrome I just like convinced myself that okay like even though I don't actually want this person to be here like he's pushed himself so much in my space like he's here now like no and you know I've seen men ruin my mother I've seen her not be able to get her emotional self in check and be a victim of all all these men and I don't want you baby girl to be a victim so don't have sex <laughs> I feel I sound like a broken record I'm sorry I don't mean to it's just like I don't know how else to say it how else do I tell you not to have sex you know what I'm saying how else do I tell you that you don't need you you just need to focus on your on your emotional self and not being in relationships with people because that's never gonna give you the self love that you need like no one's gonna love you more than you love yourself no one on this planet is gonna love you more than you love yourself no one's gonna take care of you more than you can take care of yourself you know learn from my mistake <laughs> here I am thinking I have a new boyfriend I'm in love you are stupid you are a stupid stupid girl that girl was a very stupid girl and I am so glad that it happened because I needed to learn one way or another. Obviously, you know, I took a two-year hiatus, so obviously I really needed to fix a few things in my life, but I'm glad like I came out of it still better. You know what I'm saying? I came out of it. I did come out of it. I came out of it better, I think. I like to think that I came out of it better. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. I always feel like there are some more things. I'm probably going to turn off the camera and be like, I should have also said this. I should have also said that. But love yourself. Work on your emotional self. And everything. Trust God. Please, for the love of God, trust God. Trust, trust God. No making deals with the devil, okay? Because every time we make a deal with the devil, we're going against God and then we're going to have to find ourselves back with God, making the right decisions. And he's always testing us to see whether or not we will make the right decision or if we will make a deal with the devil again, right? And then we'll just, you don't want to teeter-totter back and forth between trusting in God and trusting in yourself and, and making deals with the devil because you're going to find yourself not moving forward in life. So pick a side. You're either dealing with the devil and you're living a very sinful life or you're making a deal with God and you're going to make a life for yourself that you're going to be very happy with for the future. <sighs> Thank you for watching. Uh, that's all I have to say today. I hope that nobody ever has sex ever. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We live in such a lustful world. You don't need to, just because everyone else is having sex, trust me. It's not all that it's quacked up to be, okay? Nobody ever wants to tell you that the decisions that they are making are the wrong decisions. Nobody ever wants to tell you that. Everybody wants to act like they make the right decision. So don't look at people's lives who you know that are having lots of sex and saying that they're having a great time because I promise you they're dealing with a lot of demons that they're not sharing with you so 
don't feel pressured to have sex if you had your virginity taken away from you know that if it was taken from you in your younger years that most likely above the age of 18 19 20 this trauma is going to come out in weird ways and you're just gonna have to be patient with yourself and know that you can fix this but it all starts with your emotional intelligence first thank you for watching thank you for taking the time to listen to me i know this is it's been i know it's been a very long time since i have been here and um, I know this is like a hella, a really random video, but I hope that this is okay because I don't know what else to do right now, you know? I'm just, I want to come back and just talk, so. Anyways, love you so much. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>